Chapter 45 Doubting the Testimonies It is Satan's plan to weaken the faith of God's people in the testimonies. Satan knows how to make his attacks. He works upon minds to excite jealousy and dissatisfaction toward those at the head of the work. The gifts are next questioned. Then, of course, they have but little weight, and instruction given through vision is disregarded. Next follows skepticism in regard to the vital points of our faith, the pillars of our position, then doubt as to the Holy Scriptures, and then the downward march to perdition. When the testimonies which were once believed are doubted and given up, Satan knows the deceived ones will not stop at this, and he redoubles his efforts till he launches them into open rebellion which becomes incurable and ends in destruction. By giving place to doubts and unbelief in regard to the work of God, and by cherishing feelings of distrust and cruel jealousies, they are preparing themselves for complete deception. They rise up with bitter feelings against the ones who dare to speak of their errors and reprove their sins. A testimony for certain young men, first published in 1880, speaks of this point as follows. A prevailing skepticism is continually increasing in reference to the testimonies of the Spirit of God, and these youth encourage questionings and doubts instead of removing them, because they are ignorant of the Spirit and power and force of the testimonies. I was shown that many had so little spirituality that they did not understand the value of the testimonies or their real object. They talked flippantly of the testimonies given by God for the benefit of His people, and passed judgment upon them, giving their opinion and criticizing this and that, when they would better have placed their hands upon their lips and prostrated themselves in the dust. For they could not appreciate the spirit of the testimonies because they knew so little of the spirit of God. There are some in blank who have never fully submitted to reproof. They have taken a course of their own choosing. They have ever, to a greater or less degree, exerted an influence against those who have stood up to defend the right and reprove the wrong. The influence of these persons upon individuals who come here and who are brought in contact with them is very bad. They fill the minds of these newcomers with questionings and doubts in regard to the testimonies of the Spirit of God. They put false constructions upon the testimonies. And instead of leading persons to become consecrated to God and to listen to the voice of the church, they teach them to be independent and not to mind the opinions and judgment of others. The influence of this class has been secretly at work. Some are unconscious of the harm they are doing, but unconsecrated, proud, and rebellious themselves, they lead others in the wrong track. A poisonous atmosphere is inhaled from these unconsecrated ones. The blood of souls is in the garments of such, and Christ will say to them in the day of final settlement, Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Astonished they will be, but their professedly Christian lives were a deception, a fraud. Some express their views that the testimony of Sister White cannot be reliable. This is all that many unconsecrated ones want. The testimonies of reproof have checked their vanity and pride, but if they dared, they would go to almost any length in fashion and pride. God will give all such an opportunity to prove themselves and to develop their true characters. I saw that the reason why visions had not been more frequent of late is that they have not been appreciated by the church. The church have nearly lost their spirituality and faith, and the reproofs and warnings have had but little effect upon them. Many of those who have professed faith in them have not heeded them. If you lose confidence in the testimonies, you will drift away from Bible truth. 
I have been fearful that many would take a questioning, doubting position, and in my distress for your souls I would warn you how many will heed the warning. As you now hold the testimonies, should one be given crossing your track, correcting your errors, would you feel at perfect liberty to accept or reject any part or the whole? That which you will be least inclined to receive is the very part most needed. My brethren, beware of the evil heart of unbelief. The word of God is plain and close in its restrictions. It interferes with your selfish indulgence, therefore you do not obey it. The testimonies of His Spirit call your attention to the Scriptures, point out your defects of character, and rebuke your sins, therefore you do not heed them. And to justify your carnal, ease-loving course, you begin to doubt whether the testimonies are from God. If you would obey their teachings you would be assured of their divine origin. Remember, your unbelief does not affect their truthfulness. If they are from God, they will stand. I have been shown that unbelief in the testimonies of warning, encouragement, and reproof is shutting away the light from God's people. Unbelief is closing their eyes so that they are ignorant of their true condition. They think the testimony of the Spirit of God in reproof is uncalled for, or that it does not mean them. Such are in the greatest need of the grace of God and spiritual discernment, that they may discover their deficiency in spiritual knowledge. Many who have backslidden from the truth assign as a reason for their course that they do not have faith in the testimonies. The question now is, Will they yield their idol which God condemns, or will they continue in their wrong course of indulgence and reject the light God has given them, reproving the very things in which they delight? The question to be settled with them is, Shall I deny myself and receive as of God the testimonies which reprove my sins, or shall I reject the testimonies because they reprove my sins? In many cases, the testimonies are fully received, the sin and indulgence broken off, and reformation at once commences in harmony with the light God has given. In other instances, sinful indulgences are cherished, the testimonies are rejected, and many excuses which are untrue are offered to others as the reason for refusing to receive them. The true reason is not given. It is a lack of moral courage, a will strengthened and controlled by the Spirit of God to renounce hurtful habits. Satan has ability to suggest doubts and to devise objections to the pointed testimony that God sends, and many think it a virtue, a mark of intelligence in them, to be unbelieving and to question and quibble. Those who desire to doubt will have plenty of room. God does not propose to remove all occasion for unbelief. He gives evidence which must be carefully investigated with a humble mind and a teachable spirit, and all should decide from the weight of evidence. God gives sufficient evidence for the candid mind to believe, but he who turns from the weight of evidence because there are a few things which he cannot make plain to his finite understanding will be left in the cold, chilling atmosphere of unbelief and questioning doubts, and will make shipwreck of faith. 